So today we're going to talk about the inflation data that has just come out. The market is reacting very positively to the inflation data, but under the surface there is some bad news there and some other data that came out today is looking a little bit rough out there. And it's a bit of a follow on from yesterday's video where I said I'm starting to see a few warning signs out there. It continued today guys and I'm going to point them out for you. So hope you enjoyed the video. Let's get started. So on the surface everything looks good today. It looks like the market is happy with the inflation data. If you look at the Dow, the Dow is up. The S&P also made it to new all-time highs. 0.87% up today. The Nasdaq having a really good day as well up 1%. And you look at the inflation data and the inflation data basically came in what we was expecting. The consensus was 3.4, which was a drop from the previous month of 3.5%. And uh, that's what it came in at 3.4%, which was the consensus. So everybody's happy that we came in on what was expected and we're moving back down in the right direction, which we haven't had since the start of 2024, believe it or not, which seems a long time ago now. Now the problem is, is actually when you start getting a bit further into the inflation data. Now if you do look at the inflation data, the index for shelter rose in April as did the index for gasoline. Combined, these two indexes contributed to over 70% of the monthly increase in the index, which isn't good. Now the problem is, is why that looks so much, why it looks like 70%, you'd be thinking, wow, that's, that's a lot. But the problem is, is that when you look at how these inflation data are put together, the likes of shelter, for example, is something like 34% of the whole of the CPI data. So no wonder it's going to say that's the cause of it when you have a 34% weight into shelter. That's the big issue. And that's the big issue with this inflation data is that all it needs is shelter to go down. But if it doesn't go down, that's a big issue because it controls so much of the weighting. And that's if you look at true inflation, for example. True inflation now is nearly back down to the lows of where it was at the start of the year. However, even though it's back down at the lows of the start of the year, the reason why that's happening is because true inflation is a better representation of the inflation out there. It's more of an equal weighting, it's more up-to-date metrics, and it's a lot better. But the problem is, is Jerome Powell isn't gonna go look at true inflation data. It's gonna look at the old CPI data. And this is where the issue kind of comes from, is that it's okay saying that we need only shelter and gasoline to go down, but when it's making up this amount of weighting, even if everything else is dropping, the issue is that it's still going to look pretty high. So if you do look at some of the numbers, there's a lot of numbers. If you look at most of the numbers, the most of the numbers, over half the numbers of the categories are actually below the 3.4%. I mean, realistically, you've only got food away from home that was up above 3.4% electricity, which was up 5.1%. Serv services was up 5.3%. Shelter, as you can see here, 5.5%. And transportation, which was a big one, up 11.2%. So there is a still a few categories that does do have inflation above the target range. But the problem is, is that your two highest weighting ones are still above the 3.4%. And that's what's causing inflation to be sticky. And even though the there's only two things left that have quite high inflation. The problem is, is that this is the data that the Fed use and, and wrongly or correctly because it's heavy weighted to this, even though inflation has pretty much been taken down to quite low levels at the moment, it's still looking quite high compared to where we, we, we're realistically at at the moment. And it does make me laugh because the market always gets really excited about, oh, so uh, the inflation came in what was expected. It did go down by 0.1% from the last month. Let's send the market up. I mean, if it was up today, an extra 0.1%, the market would have totally gone in the other direction. It would have gone you know, majorly red. It makes me laugh how the, the market fluctuates so much over a 0.1% move. But realistically, the inflation trend is still not moving in the right direction. And it's definitely still very sticky around this 3% range at the moment which is a bit of an issue. Now the problem is at the moment is that while this has this effect, and even though true inflation is coming down, the numbers that the Fed are using aren't moving in the right direction. And because of that, we haven't got the Fed cuts that we were hoping for. The Fed were supposed to meet and we were expecting three cuts this year. It's now gone down to two cuts this year because what numbers they use, inflation is sticky to them. And because of that reason, we haven't had the cut this year and maybe we get it in June or July or September or November or December, but it's not happened. And because it's not happened and we've had these interest rates at this high, and we also have the lagging factor, you know, people don't realise is that when the Fed started putting up these interest rates up a year ago, it takes a good 12 to 18 months for those higher interest rates to start kicking into the economy. And now because we had all those interest rates, you know, really hiked up in 2023, 
the full effect has started to kick into the economy now. And this is where it starts getting worrying because we have the data that the Fed are using is still coming up sticky because of the weighting they have to shelter when realistically true inflation is showing that we're actually not at too bad of a levels. Because of the data that the Fed are using and it's still coming up sticky, they're currently not cutting. And then what we've seen in the last month in particular is the weakening US economy. And I pointed this out in yesterday's video. I said, I've listened to 30 different conference calls probably in the last couple of weeks. And every single conference call I listened to said that they are starting to see a weakening demand, especially in the retail space, they're seeing a weakening demand. And there was another set of data today that came out, which probably went a little bit under the radar a little bit today. And that was US retail sales. Now the retail sales came out a little bit before the inflation data and the US retail sales were unexpectedly flat in April. This is not good. We were expecting a gain of 0.4%. So this is a big drop from what we were expecting. And the fact that the growth has been slowing down, slowing down, and now we've gone flat is not good in the retail space. So this isn't a surprise to me. I, I kind of knew this was coming. I've listened to a lot of retail conference calls and a lot of businesses you know, like Knight, for example, Starbucks, for example, they've all come out and said, we're seeing a big weakening demand. Lovesack, for example, another one there. I've listened to a lot of conference calls in the last couple of weeks and they've all said the same thing. We are seeing demand weaken and weaken and weaken and it's been clear that this has been going on. And this is once again, another confirmation that the consumer environment is getting weak out there. Those higher interest rates are starting to really hurt the consumer and their spending. And that's starting to also have a bit of a kick into the job market. Now, I always said that I am not worried about interest rates until we see a weakening job market. Now this is the issue. We're starting to see it. We're starting to see a weakening job market. Why are we starting to see a weakening job market? Well, we, you're getting a weakening, weakening job market because the economy, retail sales, are getting weaker. If you have a company like Starbucks or Nike and your sales are declining or not growing, your profitability is getting hit, then you're gonna go, hold on, we're hiring all these jobs for our growth, but we're not getting the growth, so we're not gonna hire. And eventually, if them people are not having jobs, that might lead to a knock-on effect that people then are, oh, you know, there's not as many jobs out there, let's just be careful on what we're spending. And then we start going into the point of view where sales start declining. Profitability starts declining. And then you end up with the cycle of more and more job cuts. So because we're starting to see that spending pulling back, that's also now the knock-on effect that we're seeing in the job market, where the job market's also starting to cool down as well. US job gains fewest in six months as labor market cools. And if you have a look here, US job growth slowed more than expected in April as the increase in annual wages fell below 4% for the first time in nearly three years. So you've got annual wages falling, less than what we have had before. We've also had the a lower amount of payroll increases than what we were expecting. And we also have employment rate increasing as well. Now, obviously not ma massive amounts, you know, this is still pretty tight at the moment, but it's not good. And this is where this whole knock-on effect has started to build now, where yes, it's okay saying that these two categories are still the only things that's really keeping up this inflation data, but when it has such a weight into it, and the Fed uses data, is this ever gonna get to the point where the Fed are happy to have the cuts? Because we know out there, inflation isn't actually that bad out there. You look at true inflation, it's not bad, but because they have such a heavy weight into the shelter and the electricity out here, most of the, as you see down here, most of the categories are below the inflation data. There's only one, two, three, four, five categories out here that are holding it up. But the problem is, is the Fed are using this data. And because the Fed are using this data, they're not cutting. We thought we would have the cuts now and we're not having the cuts. And because we are having these higher interest rate cuts really from 12, 18 months ago kicking in now, that's now hitting the spending. We've seen consumers spending less in the retail market and because of the spending less in the realtor market, now we've seen businesses being a little bit more cautious. Okay, we don't need to hire many, as many people. That leads to higher employment rate. It also leads that they don't have to try and attract people as much because there's now gonna get a little bit more of a shortage of jobs. So the earnings don't increase as much. So overall, this knock-on effect is really starting to kick in now. now we are still a couple of months away where this does start to come a major issue. 
However, there is a couple of warning signs out there where it's like, we're starting to see the cracks a little bit now. And this is what I said out on yesterday's video where I talked about, is there going to potentially be a stock market crash in 2024? We'll see, because all the power lies with the Fed at the moment. The Fed are basically going to be probably the deciders in this situation, and hopefully they're not going to do the classic thing where they're very slow to react. They wait until the economy shows big cracks, and then they start cutting, cutting the interest rates. That's what the Fed historically do. They normally wait too long and then cut. Hopefully they start to see the weakness out there, and they do the right things, and they do cut. And we'll find out soon, because obviously we've got the next set of meetings in June, uh, and then we'll have to wait to July. I mean, by the time we get to September, that would probably get a little bit worrying if we don't see the cuts. But the pressure is starting to really pile on for the Fed for these cuts now because the weakness is starting to be there. And for me personally, I've seen the weakness in a lot of companies that I've done a lot of uh, conference calls on in the last couple of weeks. So for me, I'm just being a bit cautious. I'm still keeping most of the money in the stock market. You know, I'm never going to try time the market. But like I said in yesterday's video, for me, I think it is important to have that maybe that 10% cash pile on the side and that's uh, something that I've really started to build up in the last kind of like couple of months just to make sure that if that situation does happen I'm there for the dips in the stocks if they do follow the economy which normally eventually does happen if we see the earnings deterioration happen we probably will see it so definitely some worrying signs out there at the moment to keep the uh, keep your eyes on guys you know I always said to you that I'm never worried about these interest rates until we start seeing the cracks in the in, in, into the company's earnings and also the job data and uh, as you can see here from the report that I showed you today and the job data there's definitely some signs there that are not as pretty as what they were uh, maybe three or four months ago so uh, we'll keep an eye on that thanks for watching guys hit that like button see you in a bit